We've already established the multiplication rule for counting. Now we're going to introduce permutations and combinations, which are two new techniques for counting the number of possibilities that are used in some specific, uh, such, uh, specific situations. The first thing we want to consider when we're counting up possible scenarios, possible outcomes, is does a selection from a group occur with or without replacement. When we talked about the multiplication rule for counting, we had this scenario of a pizza restaurant. You could pick toppings, and an individual topping could be picked twice. So if you wanted to double up on peppers, double up on pepperoni, or you could choose two different options for the veggies, two different options. But in those situations, our selections occurred with replacement. You could choose the same item twice. If we're playing a game of cards, where we deal out cards and everyone holds some of those in their hand for the duration of the game, then once we deal, say, the Four of Diamonds, the Eight of Spades, the Jack of Diamonds, King of Clubs, Ace of Spades, as we start dealing out those cards, they can't be dealt again. Two people can't hold the same card in their hand, so in that case, that would be an example of selection without replacement. Once an item is selected, or in this case dealt out, it can't be selected again. So we have to think about whether selection is occurring with or without replacement, and we have to think about whether the order of the selection matters. So does order of selection matter in a race? Well, yes, because we track who wins first, second, third, fourth, and so on. So the order of that selection, the order that people place in that race, matters. Does order matter in a hand of cards? There could be some games where it might, but generally the answer would be no. For instance, in poker, a royal flush is a straight flush consisting of a 10, jack, queen, king, and an ace, all of the same suit. But it doesn't matter how those cards get dealt out to you. Say they came in the order of queen, 10, ace, jack, and then king. It doesn't matter that you receive them in a different order. They still fit that pattern. You can rearrange them in your hand to fit that winning pattern. Does order matter in selecting people for a team? Well, generally, no, as long as everyone on that team is serving the same role, participating at the same level or in the same way. It doesn't matter if I picked you first or fourth, you're still on the team. Does order of selection matter? if we're selecting people for specific positions on a team? Well, in that case, yes. Say the team has a leader or a president. If it's a club or committee, it might have a treasurer, secretary. So it's not just about being on the team. It's about serving in a specific position or role in that team. So in that case, order would matter. We have these two questions. So the first one is, if selection occurs without replacement, then we're going to look at using either permutations or combinations. So that's the first question. If we know our selection occurs without replacement, the next question is if order matters. So if order matters, then that's a case where we're going to be looking at using permutations or if order does not matter, then that's a case for combinations. And we'll look at videos at how we assess that 
and then use these approaches to calculate results.